finding the tribe where you belong and building your identity, that's the same journey. And I think that the best way to illustrate this journey is by connecting to stories, very important stories, especially the first one. So about 2000 years ago, there was a uh, Jewish boy that was born into obscurity and seemingly died into obscurity who happened to change the whole world forever. And his name was Jesus of Nazareth later on to be called Jesus Christ. And his story is the perfect illustration of what this journey from not belonging, this journey from the place of your birth, right? The stories of your parents out into your place in the world. And the reason it's the perfect illustration of that journey is because he just simply went about doing good until he was called to his cross. When he didn't know where his place in the world was, he took the place that he found himself and the places that he moved through on his journey and he went about doing good. He spent time with the deplorables, right? With the blind people, with the prostitutes, and he helped them in the best way that he could. He, he went around telling the truth and loving people in the deepest way that he could. And that created a momentum. It created a movement. And then, and he did this until one day. He was called to his cross. And when he was called to his cross, he went there voluntarily, even though that he knew he was going there to die. He took the journey to his cross and he poured out his life energy on the cross. His literal blood, right? His literal life energy. He poured he poured his life energy out on the cross for the benefit of all mankind. So what is this what how does this inform us on our own journey toward meaning, purpose, belonging? Well, I think it gives us an image. It gives us an image for the journey, right? When you're in that early stage, right? I'm thinking about Mark Twain's quote where the two most important days of your life are the day that you're born and the day that you found out why. Well, the day that Jesus found out why he was born was the day he got called to his cross. And we all have these two sections of our lives if we're on a journey to find our place. I mean, if, if you if you go where if you if you stay where you are and hunker down, then you never have to worry about going on that journey. And this show's probably not for you. But if you're if you're if you're feeling pain, if you're if you feel trapped in the wrong place. If, if you, if you feel like you have more to give, if you feel like, if you feel like you have, you have more to contribute, if you feel like the roles that you're in are not the roles where you can do the most good, then in that stage, before it's revealed to you where that, where that place is, go about doing good, do your best in these roles, love people, tell the truth. Right? In the deepest way that you can. Do the most good that you can. And then one day, you'll get a vision of the cross. And if you think about what the symbol of the cross is, you realize that, that this problem that we've been grappling with around trying to find our, our place and, 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 and our tribe, it's the perfect symbolic representation because it's the intersection point, right? X marks the spot. So you could say that that when you that the cross is made up of the stories of the imagined orders of the tribes that are associated with the stories, it's it's the made up of the of the imagined orders that you're most well suited for, right? So imagine one 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 plank is made of your family. And the other plank is made of your career. Those are the two most local, the most impactful, 
right? Imagine a plank is made of your citizenship and a plank is made of your religion. A plank is made of your political party, right? It's, it's, it's the, the groups, the tribes that you're most well suited to live in. It's a symbol of that because Jesus in our story literally poured out his blood, his life energy on behalf of, of humanity. But isn't that what we're all called to do? Aren't you called to pour out your life energy on for the benefit of the people around you? And isn't it unclear that how just what sort of ripples that creates in the world at at large? Because here's the here's the truth. Here's the sad truth. Pouring out your life energy is not up for debate. You don't get a choice. Even if everything goes well, you pour your, you, you exhaust your energy doing things until you die. Don't, isn't it, doesn't it, doesn't it feel intuitively right that there would be a, a group of, of tribes that you could live within a, a set of roles that you could occupy a specific identity as a adult that you could that you could live out that would allow you to use your life energy that you're pouring out for the benefit of the most people or the greatest benefit or of a smaller number of people and and if that's true how is that different than 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 pouring your life energy out on the cross so I think this whole journey that we've been talking about over the last several, several, several episodes, f- finding belonging and finding your purpose and finding meaning, I think we're talking about a journey from being in the wrong tribes, in the wrong roles, carrying the wrong responsibilities out into the world in search of your cross. And once you arrive at your cross, then you pour your life energy out in the best way that you can for the benefit of humanity, including the ones that don't even understand the sacrifice. That's what you're called to do. And that's the first story that I think perfectly illustrates this whole journey. And so the second, the second of those, of those journeys is something, it's a myth that I think of, I call the golden, the golden thread. And what it, what it is, it has to do with this Greek gentleman, uh, from a very long time ago, even prior to our Jesus story, assuming it happened, uh, named Theseus. And so once upon a time, there's a young prince named Theseus who lived in the city of Athens. He was brave and strong and daring, but he had a heavy heart. For the people of Athens were being terrorized by a monster called the Minotaur, who lived in a labyrinth deep beneath the city. The Minotaur was a creature with the body of a man, but the head of a bull, and he was known to devour anyone who entered the labyrinth. Every nine years, the people of Athens would be forced to send seven young men and seven young women as tribute to the Minotaur to be devoured as his sacrifice. Theseus knew, though, that he had to find a way to stop the Minotaur and save the people of Athens, so he decided to volunteer to be one of the sacrifices. And when he arrived in the city of Crete, he met a young princess named Ariadne, who was daughter of the king Minos, who had the labyrinth and the Minotaur. Ariadne was moved by Theseus's bravery, and she decided to help him. She gave him a ball of thread, told him to unwind it, as he went into the labyrinth. This way, he could find his way back out again once he had defeated the Minotaur. So Theseus entered the labyrinth, laying down the thread that Ariadne had given him. He wandered through the twisting, turning passages, facing many dangers along the way, but he was determined to find the Minotaur, and he finally came face to face with the monster in its lair. Despite the monster's fearsome appearance, appearance the- Theseus was not afraid. He drew his sword, and the two clashed in a fierce and epic battle. But Theseus was clever and quick, and he was able to dodge the Minotaur's blows and land a strike to the monster's heart. So with the monster defeated, 
Theseus retraced his steps through the labyrinth, following that golden thread that Ariadne had made him back to the entrance. When he emerged, he was greeted by Ariadne and the people of Crete who cheered and hailed him as a hero. And so Theseus and Ariadne returned to Athens where they were greeted as heroes by the people of the city. They were married in a grand ceremony and they lived happily ever after ruling Athens as king and queen. From that day on, the people of Athens no longer had to fear the Minotaur or the Labyrinth, for Theseus had defeated the monster and saved them all. And the story of Theseus, Ariadne, and the Labyrinth became a classic tale of bravery, cunning, and true love that would be told for generations. I believe that you, too, have a golden thread connecting you to where you're meant to be connecting you to the bundle of stories most well suited for you, connecting you to the tribe where you belong. You just have to gather the courage to grab it when it presents itself. A flicker of interest, a new book, a video calls you. A flicker of interest in a new potential romantic partner that you happen to see. Will you pull it? I think that makes all the difference. And so these two stories, this, these stories of Theseus and Jesus, I think that they combine to lay out the pathway to your place in the world. I think that that golden thread, it connects to your heart and the other end connects to your cross. And it's up to you to pull it, pull it through the fights through the, the, the battles with the Minotaur, through the twists and turns that, that, that life inevitably takes you on and until one day you arrive at the foot of your cross and then you climb up on it and you pour your life energy out on there. And, I, and hopefully what that looks like is different for you. I think, I think that, I think that it, it should look more like Theseus's journey than Jesus, right? Because it's, it's not normally a literal pouring out of your blood. It's a symbolic pouring out of your blood. And it usually involves the two things that just, that was just revealed in the story of Theseus. That story of Theseus is the, is a, is a, is, is a retelling of the, of the same story of the, the story, the oldest story of the hero's journey, right? The going out into the unknown, the, the battling monsters and facing fears until those monsters are subdued, until, the, until that dragon is killed and you're given the gold and the princess. You, you're given the family and the career that only you can act out. That's what your cross is made up of, I think. And I think that that is the perfect illustration of this journey toward your place in the world. Thank you for listening. If you're interested in supporting the show, in the description, you'll find multiple links that will allow you to do that involving real estate and, and other things. But the main one is the insider newsletter we, letter we send out every Friday to keep the, the community up to, up to date on what's happening. Get these ideas into your hands. Hope you'll be part of that. But until next time.